A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. We pray together. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invoke you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me, who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need, that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly And that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thine aid. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the year 1531, the beginning of the 16th century, Europe was in a religious mess. The Protestant Reformation had caused havoc throughout Europe, and there were a lot of questions about what even the church taught, what people believed. Then there was this discovery of lands by the Europeans that they didn't know existed. And there was a large population in these new lands here in the Americas. And we know that this indigenous population that was here was not always treated super well by the new Europeans who had come. In fact, sometimes they were even enslaved. However, it was the Catholic Church who were some of the first voices to acknowledge the humanity and the, to acknowledge the, the beauty of all of the people who lived here. And the Catholic Church began to say, every single person has a right to know Jesus Christ and even speak out against slavery. We think of the great Dominican preacher Bartolome de las Casas, who really held especially for the rights of the indigenous peoples. Yet, in those early 1500s, uh, despite the efforts of missionaries, conversions were going slowly. Many of the local indigenous saw the new Catholic faith that had come to their shores as the religion of their new taskmasters, the religion of those who had conquered them, a religion of, quote-unquote, white people, I guess you'd have to say. That all changed in 1531. That all changed in 1531. One cold December morning, an Indian convert, Juan Diego, was making his way from a village north of Mexico City to Mexico City to find a doctor for his sick uncle. And who showed up? Our Blessed Mother. Our Blessed Mother. And very interestingly, she came not as a white princess, but she came as an Aztec princess, as one of his own. And she spoke to him not in Spanish, but in Nahuatl, in his language, in his native language. And she announced the good news, the good news of salvation. And she said to me, my son, build a church for me on this spot. Now, of course, when St. Juan Diego came to the archbishop, uh, Bishop Zumaraga, he did not believe him. And St. Juan Diego asked for a sign. And then we know about that sign, right? On the 12th of December, he got this sign of Castilian roses, blooming at a time when there should not be roses, blooming at a time when it was cold. And he thought, ah, here is the sign. So he gathered up those roses in the cactus fiber tilma that he was wearing, 
And he brought them to the archbishop so he could see this sign that the Blessed Mother had sent for him. And of course he opened that tilma and the rose petals fell out. But painted on there was now the miraculous image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. That tilma should have disintegrated 300 years ago, yet it looks as new as the day that our Lord himself painted it. By the way, a little funny aside about that. Um, when Hillary Clinton was the Secretary of uh, State, she went to Mexico City to, uh, um, to resolve a dispute with Mexican truck drivers. And she got there early. So she went to the Basilica. And the rector of the Basilica came out and greeted her. And she said, oh, she looked at the tilma. That's really beautiful. Who painted that again? And the rector said, um, God. Kind of interesting. I think she got a little bit of a lesson in Catholic history that day. But indeed, our Lord sent his blessed mother to evangelize, to announce the good news of salvation to the new world. And he sent her in a way that the people could understand. And that led to a watershed moment for the conversion of the new world. And we see today that in Mexico, the indigenous are some of the strongest Catholics there. Brothers and sisters, we've been talking about the need for friendship in Christ as combating the loneliness of our time. On Monday, I spoke about the need for true friends. Tuesday, the need for friends within the church. Yesterday, a need for friends of the saints above. Today, we'll talk to you just a little bit about the greatest friend of God, which is his own mother, our blessed mother. Now, in the gospel today, we hear about our Lord saying, you must hate father and mother. And we certainly know that we must follow God first. And the Lord would come to set the world on fire. And even if our parents should get in the way of the love of God, we must move beyond that and love always God first. And we know, especially I hear this from converts, that they tell me sometimes their parents are the greatest obstacle to them embracing the Catholic faith. But we also know that a good parent can nurture in the faith. And a good parent can bring us closer to God. And of course, we all have the same parent. Because brothers and sisters, if we are brothers and sisters of Christ, we're also sons and daughters of Mary, right? That's why when ever of my separated brothers and sisters in the Protestant religion say, well, what is this oldest devotion you have towards Mary? Aren't you a brother of Christ? I said, I am. And if I'm a brother of Christ, aren't you? And you're a brother of Christ, aren't you a son of Mary? stop and go, oh. That's right, brothers and sisters, because Mary is one of those greatest tools that can draw us always closer to Christ. She's the most perfect disciple. She constantly does God's will. And in terms of example, she follows most closely with Christ, right? From the Annunciation all the way through faithfully to the foot of the cross where she does not run off as his apostles do. She stays faithfully there. And then she's there at the resurrection. She's there at Pentecost. She receives the Holy Spirit. And she perseveres in praying with the early church, even as she prays with us now. So what about us? Do we have a relationship with her? She's the ultimate model of contemplation for us. We see her in Scripture. She talks a lot at the very beginning of the Gospel, but then she goes silent, although she's there. Her very last words at Scripture are in the very first miracle of Jesus. It's at the wedding at Cana in Galilee. And there her very last words in all of Scripture are to the servants and to all of us, do whatever He tells you. Do whatever He tells you. That's what Marian devotion is, brothers and sisters. All devotion to Mary, all true devotion to Mary is ultimately devotion to Christ. She acts like the moon, constantly reflecting the light of the sun. The sun never produces light on its own. It only, uh, the, the, the moon never produces light on its own. It only reflects the light of the sun. And the same thing with Mary. All of her light is ultimately light of her son because she is the most perfect disciple. Do whatever he tells you. Now, how do we become friends with Mary in a practical way? Well, actually, brothers and sisters, I think the solution is pretty obvious. 
And we Dominicans are pretty bold about that solution because we wear it on the outside of us, right? A Dominican wears his or her rosary here where a medieval knight would wear his sword. And often we also carry in our pockets another small rosary. We have sword and dagger ready to go, taking on the spiritual fight in the world. And we know it's a fight because we must keep going, especially proclaiming the good news in the midst of so many problems. And we know that we're surrounded by bad news, right? We hear in our own beloved country so much division, so much anger, so many people forgetting about God. We hear about this in our church, so much of a mess, so many scandals, so much bad news. If you're tired of bad news, though, I encourage you to go back and meditate on the good news. And the good news is, God has come to save us. And where do we find the mysteries of the good news? In the rosary. If you're tired of bad news, brothers and sisters, pray the rosary. If you want some good news, pray the rosary. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has asked us all, each and every Catholic, to pray the rosary, not just when somebody dies, not just when our family tells us, but every day. Every day. Our Archbishop, when he consecrated the Archdiocese last year to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, asked for every single Catholic to pray the rosary every day. And it's not just the Pope, not just the Archbishop who have asked us, but you know who else asked us? The Blessed Mother herself, right? 101 years ago at Fatima, asking us to pray the rosary every day. Now you might say, Father James, that's a heck of a lot of prayer. My response would be, you're right, we need it. Things are bad. We need to take out the weapon of the rosary. And we, brothers and sisters, need to join our Blessed Mother, St. Michael and his angels, in sending Satan and his minions back to hell. We want the good news. We need to pray the rosary. We want to be champions in the spiritual battle. We must be champions of the rosary. You want to be friends with Jesus? Make friends with Mary. She'll keep you always close there. She beckoned us in Tepeyac during those dark days. And she beckons us now to get to know her son. She has given us a means to do this too through the Most Holy Rosary, the summary of the Gospel, and the summary of the good news. In these dark days, brothers and sisters, when we feel lonely and more isolated than ever, let us stay close to Mary, that we might stay close to Christ all the way to heaven to become saints. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.